my boys, today is a special day. We are going to be demonstrating and showcasing the AI that I created for everyone to learn and play and master the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! And you can now play it and use it and try it for free. This is your own personal AI dueling assistant. I'm going to demonstrate how it's going to analyze my deck, point out strengths and weaknesses, and also uh, give me an estimation on a win rate against the top meta, and then also give me advice on how I can improve my deck throughout this test and this trial. So check out this video. I hope you guys enjoy it. And the first part is just going to be me working with the AI very much hands on so you can see all the details from end to end. Then we're going to go through our 10 dual challenge. And then at the end, we're going to see if I can improve the 48% win rate that it gave my deck. So can I get better than what the AI expects me to get versus the meta? Let's find out. I don't know if any of you have any experience working with something like ChatGPT, for example, but when you're working with the AI that I created, you don't use it like ChatGPT. You use it as an extension of uh, yourself. You use it as an extension of the duelist. So basically think of it as your own AI personal assistant, you know, your focused dual bot that's going to help you get in there for game. So what we did was I devised a few questions just to ask. The first question is, as I said, as of 2024, uh, June 2024, we're our top five decks. And when I asked that question, it re returned to query and basically let me know Snake Eye Fire King, Rescue Ace, Labyrinth, Super Heavy Samurai, and Manadium. It said that these three decks, I mean, or these five decks, are the best five decks in the metagame, which I took a quick look at like Master of Meta and things like that. And I would say, you know, according to those findings and other websites, as you can see, I'm listed here in all the references um, that, you know, it's definitely pretty accurate, but this is drawing from more than just one website. So it's kind of aggregating all of the web's sources speaking on this particular subject I asked for and it's bringing together everything. But if when it brings together all information from everywhere, it's saying Snake Eye Fire King is the number one enemy um, that we should be looking out for. Then my follow up question was, what are the strengths and weaknesses? Um, you know, are there any correlations in the play style or common weaknesses in these top decks? So basically it begins to break down each deck and breaks down their strengths and their weaknesses. So Snake Eye Fire King, strengths, synergy, field control, versatility, uh, weaknesses, reliance on key cards, graveyard dependency. Then you have Rescue Ace, strengths, you know, combo potential, resource management, and adaptability, weaknesses, combo disruption, uh, consistency issues. Uh, Labyrinth, very quickly, strength, high attack power, disruption defensive capabilities that is true weaknesses uh the complexity of the deck can be a challenge for some players so everybody's not going to be a, a really everyone's not going to be the best labyrinth player there's going to be some mediocres there's going to be some champions there's going to be some savants but it's basically saying with complexity there's going to be some missed players so you know be on your guard to look for those key weaknesses and openings and then it's also weak to back row removal as you know that because they play back row this super heavy samurai says strong monsters flexibility and uh defense and offense they have really good on both sides to switch between it and this is weaknesses high level curve and reliance on specific key cards so basically you know you can get them at a choke point monodium Quick synchro, so synchro summoning in your turn. Um, uh, key card utilization, meaning that there are choke points. It even mentions it, like cards like Beast of Star Frost. And then resource efficiency. Uh, the deck can recycle things, so you know that's one of his biggest strengths. But his weaknesses is graveyard vulnerability and consistency. So basically, correlation and common weaknesses between these decks. They are combo oriented field control decks. So a common weakness between these are combo disruption, utilizing cards like Ash Blossom of Joyous Springs, Effect Veiler, uh, Infinite, and Permanence. Uh, graveyard Control, using cards like DD Crow or and or, it says Macros Cosmos, if, if you uh, can run something like that. 
Uh, I li- I'll also like that it said Macros Cosmos because who's thinking about that? Nobody. But if you have the ability to play something like that, that's pretty useful. Um, just kind of wink, you can use that. And then back row removal. Um, obviously, since you know all these all these decks seem to have a little bit of back row in it, so back row removal running in the deck is standard. Cosmic Cyclone, Harkness Feather Duster, things like that. And then overall, that's the top current decks. So at this point, um, I I'm ready to ask it about my deck. You know, I've I've asked it the question. The preliminary question was, what are the best decks? Because this is what we really want to get at. Our main question is, what are my chances of my deck winning against, you know, these top decks? But before we can ask that question, we have to actually get in the right position to ask that question, which is basically making sure it fully understands, like, what the top decks are. And it does from this uh, assessment. And then I ask it, well what do you know about the gladiator beast archetype and then it says it's the gladiator beast archetype is a series of gladiator beast monsters you get a trading card game they tag in they tag out uh varied effects so you already know a little bit of pop a little bit of add a little bit of remove you know all that good stuff uh fusion monsters so it basically broke it down to tag out mechanics a variety of effects and fusion monsters then it said notable cards gazaris heraklinos bestiari and laquari <laughs> so it's so it's going right for the for like hey these are the best ones that you should be looking at um and it's kind of funny too because this is like what it directly goes to uh didn't mention domitianus but you know it only mentioned what is this five it only mentioned four but uh let's see it says strengths adaptability resilience Powerful removal and negation, Gazaris, Heraklonos, uh, that it specifically mentions. Weaknesses, uh, dependence on the battle phase, uh, consistency issues, <laughs> and graveyard and field disruption. So, yeah, it pretty much has it down packed. I think it kind of knows what's going on. Uh, yeah, it's a typical control deck, you know, it has with combinations, can get aggressive. Yeah, so then my follow up question to that is. Um, uh, is that uh, is it a strong contender against the top five decks? So I asked it the question that I already knew the answer to, but I wanted to see what it was going to say. Is it a strong contender against the top five decks? Just as it stands, what the AI thinks of the Gladiator V deck, and then it basically says uh, it is very uh, adaptable and approachable. However, then it goes into the details. So it's going back into the snake eye stuff and saying how its strengths can like what strengths can help you beat these decks. So it's saying against snake eye, if you can establish field control, you can beat it. It says it's against uh, oops, I passed it up uh, against rescue ace it says if I'm adaptable and I get some negation going, I can stop rescue ace uh, It's saying labyrinth. If I can get removal, and set up some good defenses then I can or, or get through uh, the defensive capabilities of uh, Labyrinth then I can win super heavy samurai battle phase control so basically um, you know I got a field control it's pretty much the same thing because you know if you, you're not controlling the battle phase if you didn't control the field and then monodiums quick removal and then adaptability is going to be my only chance against uh monodium so basically having some sort of response in their turn so field control board control is what it's saying but then as it goes through the weaknesses it's kind of laying me out and talking about how the gladiator beast that it was talking about does not stand a chance so basically it was like speed and consistency you're gonna take an l <laughs> uh you're <laughs> it said the fire kings are very resilient so, you know, don't count on uh, run, them running out of resources. Uh, then it also goes to Rescue Ace. It said they're going to combo you into Oblivion and also um, consistency issues. <laughs> so, you know, as you see, as you're going through here, you know, it's laying out all this information as to, like, why the Glare Beast deck probably would not be successful. And then it also says here, which I really like, it goes... 
Gladiator Beast can offer a unique uh, adaptable strategy, but generally struggles against the raw power, speed, and consistency of the current top tier deck. So it literally just said it's outclassed and outmatched. It basically is what the AI is saying. And I would say like any competitive player just looking at it outside looking in would say such a thing. So then I come back with my rebut. I basically go, this is my Gladiator Beast deck. It focuses on going second rather than going first because that's what most people choose. My strategy in the deck list is as follows. And then let me know if this is effective against the top five decks. And then basically I list out my win condition and basically I say it's a go second deck that focuses on cracking the field uh, or breaking the board, uh, weakening the opponent, by baiting out or banishing cards you, with my Tri Brigade combo line. And then finally, in a weakened state, I will attempt to win the game with something like an Access Code Talker, or I will execute the Gladiator Beast combo, which ends on four to six negates, which covers monster spells and traps that I plan on implementing going into turn three. And then basically, I put the whole deck list as it is right now. So then after it takes the whole deck list, considers what we previously talked about and also considers its own deck list. So it goes into, you know, the obvious strengths. <coughs> so it goes into the obvious strengths, board breaking capabilities, flexible and adaptable resource management, um, you know, using cards like Tri Brigade or Bolts, also like a good card for going first. So it mentioned that card too, but then it goes weaknesses dependent on going second, combo reliance, and also um, graveyard dependency. So basically it gives me um, my matchups against Snake Eye, Rescue Ace, Labyrinth, Sup Sup Samurai, and Minadium. But then after it concludes that, I go ahead and just say, given this new information, what do you expect the overall win rate to be if I had 10 duels? And basically, according to this, after I put in my deck, after it looked at the web, after it used all the resources from around the internet to assess this, it says I got an estimated 50% win rate on Snake Eye, a 45% win rate on Rescue Ace, 55% win rate on Labyrinth, a 50% win rate on Six Samurai, and a Monadium is 40% win rate. So it's basically saying that I'm gonna have an average of 48% in terms of a win rate if I play my Gladiator Beast deck in ranked PvP. It's telling me that I'm gonna have a 48% win rate. So as you already know, in Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel or any Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, ranking system, any ranking system, 48% is really bad. You need to at least be, if you're going to be on the map, 55%, you know, at least be winning more than you're losing. 48%, I'm losing more than I'm winning. So basically, after I went through there, I go and ask, I'm like, so what can I add to the deck that will, you know, help increase the win rate like across these decks like what could i do and it took a look at my deck and it basically offered these uh things it says you can increase the consistency by adding more draw cards and stuff like that pot of prosperity is suggested an upstart goblin you know can't play another copy of pot of prosperity since it's banned or whatever restricted to one uh so it doesn't know that per se but you know it that is a good suggestion run some more draw cards which is why Pride of prosperity is in there then it says enhance your disruption add dd crow ghost veil or effect veiler dd crow definitely i could probably add and i think that is a good add and it also mentioned that previously that dd crow would have been a good add as it was telling me about the strengths and weaknesses in general and then also um it says uh versatile removal Cosmic Cyclone, Twin Twisters, um, and then maybe some Kaijus. And we do have a Kaiju engine we can play, and we do play Twin Twisters sometimes. So I will consider both of those um, as we continue to play if my win rate is like 48% for real or lower. But definitely we will change it and add those things if, if that's the case. And then it goes through here and says specific uh, 
things that we can use to like win the duel against our opponent. So basically against the Snake Eye Fire King is saying maybe try Artifact Lancia. It's saying against Rescue Ace, maybe try Cross Out Designator. Against uh, Labyrinth, maybe try Red Reboot. Uh, against Super Heavy Samurai, maybe try Forbidden Chalice. And then against Monadium, uh, try Dimensional Shifter. <laughs> now D Shifter would tilt me as well, but uh maybe let's try macros cosmos like it mentioned before and hopefully i go first and then I, i'll cook them by flipping macros cosmos but basically it's, it's provided me some very solid suggestions and it even redid my deck and it looks like it's pretty much the same except for it added one dd crow which i think is pretty cool it took the 19 no duh, 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 nope it added one dd crow so and it didn't change this number so yeah so it'd be 20 monsters so it'd be 41 cards with the dd crow in there and um yeah it only added the dd crow so yeah so with that it's told me i'm gonna have a 48 percent win rate it also told me adding a dd crow would vastly uh improve my chances of winning so let's just do that one thing let's just take this out and since it mentioned that DD Crow is going to vastly improve my chances of winning, let's go ahead and add Crow so that we can try to be above the 48%. Because real talk, I will say one thing. We went through the trouble of getting the analysis. Why not take a little bit of that analysis and see if it's going to help us out? So let's get in there and try out 10 duels with the AI technology. All right, my boys, real fast, as we jump into our 10 duels, I totally forgot to mention that we have a little process here. So basically, we are going to let it know uh, that we're going to be doing our 10 duel match. We're going to be analyzing these 10 duels. It asked us to provide a deck, the results of the duel, and also notable strategies. And then, of course, you can add whatever else you want. And then at the, 10 of these, at the end of these 10 duels, it's going to actually provide us a win rate and then provide any type of feedback on our gameplay or anything else like that. So let's jump into it and check it out. All right. Now, because we are playing a Go Second deck, we do got the advantage of starting these games right at the Go Second phase. But unfortunately for me, I opened up with this hand, and this is not good. This is no uh th this is not going to be affecting this opponent currently i need to top deck something good so that i can get the ball rolling or top deck something that can contend with this opponent and when i top deck of course we top deck the mass c uh first duel starting out <laughs> it ain't looking good just saying so i start off with harvey's feather duster which gets the swift uh negation also we take 400 points of damage every time a card is played. So this is a silly little uh, combo, unfortunately. So he's got a spell negate, he's got the monster negate, plus I'm gonna take damage every time I play a card and a bounce. So that's nothing to really joke with. And honestly, um, he's got me pretty much on lockdown on every single play I can make. So he's got my normal, he's got my special, um, and um, he was able to stop my spell. So I don't really have too much of a play here but i do just kind of play it out a little bit and then i think i do eventually scoop or he en ends up clapping me but definitely yeah not gonna get the dub on this one so uh yeah so looks like the ai <laughs> was correct in his assessment that i was gonna get my cheeks clapped <laughs> but will it be correct at 48 percent looks like the opponent didn't open kind of open crazy just a back row and a monster summoned in attack position it's witchcrafters you know they got hand traps and all kinds of silly stuff or i don't remember if it's hand traps exactly i remember they had a couple little funny cards that had some unique effects but that kind of doesn't matter because you know we've we've got like the setup here we've literally got back row removal monster negation and also called by the grave for your ash or maxi where was this in the last duel i have no idea so we're just going to go ahead and do this he's going to go ahead and do branded beast absolutely fine branded beast is not uh an issue at all uh hit him with the skullduggery and then we're going to go ahead and hit the lightning storm blow up this back row 
and then we're going to proceed to link one into all mirage and then we're going to use that to go into Karis. and now we've got out the dragon champion so you know it's combo time so we're going to use Karis to drop and boom we're going to use the effect to summon uh dragasis and now it's time for the gladiator combo um you know as you know a lot of people don't know like what this is and also you know if you saw through my uh ai explanation um you saw that like i had to let the ai know that like this is the combo that i do and this is why i'm confident that we're going to get the dubs and the ai was like well based on that i think you should come out at 48 <laughs> percent so we gotta prove them wrong man so this is the gladiator beast combo this is this is the one that i did i know we can get some more percentage points on this man and then also we do got to face our fabled opponent so basically we set up our board we've got gladiator beast heraclinos gladiator beast dermitianus with um gladiator beast equestes in defense position that was uh was it something about this no it wasn't something about this it was brought out <coughs> excuse me but um pretty much we just got uh, monster destruction protection plus spell trap negation and it looks like he just gave us the scoop so uh you know we take these gladiator beast build or gladiator beast board well deserved so we take that dub so we're already improving the first one was a l the second one was a big dub so let's see what our third game is going to be like all right duel number three and i'm up first this time and uh, it's pretty okay hand it's not all that bad this is pretty decent going first um we've got some good plays but also opened up with noxious didn't like that so basically we're gonna do our gladiator beast combo and we're gonna well our tri brigade combo because we're gonna probably just set up um you know a non gladiator beast board set send noxious back to the deck stuff like that so we bring out the shoe rig link two into bearboom and shoe rig's effect search for nerval special with bearboom and use nerval's effect to bring out uh yep the bear and link for appalooza and then we're just gonna go ahead and set the caught by the grave we're gonna go ahead and draw and then also get the um the uh revolt now what's funny about this is when i did this and i remember live recording this i was like yeah i gotta set this but in the back of my mind i had one evil thought i was like it better not be harpy's feather duster he better not do it he better not do harpy's feather duster i didn't i didn't dare whisper it but i had the evil thought and then all of a sudden <laughs> you devious fiend however <laughs> we do get the chain revolt and bring out shurik so it's slightly salvageable which gives us a draw and this draw is powerful my boy so we're gonna harpy's feather duster nuke everything but we did do one thing correct off of this chain we chained correctly uh blossom first and nerval second even though it risks the ash it gives me a draw and then it gives me an add then it gives me a draw and a return so basically it gives you a free draw so we're gonna add and then we're gonna draw and then we're gonna return <laughs> he couldn't see it but uh you know we got him <laughs> All right, so now we're in duel number four. We lost the first one and we won the next two. So we're doing good right now. We're doing good right now. Um, and it looks like I'm going second as desired. Pretty good, pretty decent hand going second. Um, interesting. Oh, do I use the ash right here? I definitely use the ash right there. Saw that cyber emergency, definitely ashed it because I literally was playing Cyber Dragon. Check out Cyber Dragon Week on my channel. So we go ahead and ash that card. And because we ashed it, we literally got him to end a turn because we know we're all about that card. Normal summon, link one into kit. This is why I love my combo with my Tri-Brigade stuff because the Tri-Brigade uh, Gladiator Beast combo is basically a one and a half card combo because we do recoup. However, um, 
you can always pop it off. Like, you know, it's, it's never a time where you can't pop it off. But if you will, you be messed with manipulated, you know, will they stop you from comboing? I don't know. So here's the Mitianus link to you guys know how we do it. It's a patented combo over here. We do it well. We do it well. We do it consistently. We do it so good that the AI is surprised, my boy. AI counted us out. 48% win rate. What is that? I want to shout it out. I created you. I'll destroy you. I'll press that delete button. You'll be gone forever. <laughs> so so we did. The, so we went and did the bastard thing and did the maxi in the draw phase. And then this guy goes call by the grave. So, ah, touche. I will answer your call by the grave with Heraklonos and use Dark Ruler no more. But then he answers my Heraklonos with called by the grave. So it's dual called by the grave. But I opened dual Dark Ruler no more. Now, you know, normally I would be like, maybe I'll let it go or something. Hold it because who knows where I need that spell. But then again, anytime he summons, I profit so. On the same chain, on the same chain as Hercules, Negates. <laughs> Look at that, Negates. <laughs> roach time. So now he's under the roach insurance. He's doing it too. What a madman. Searches, summons. Then as soon as, now what's funny is as soon as he summons Cyber Dragon, I knew what he was up to. So I quickly got my monster out of the extra monster zone. Cyber Dragon Week. Check it out. That's how you become a champion duelist. You got to figure out all the metas, man. Cyber Dragon Week. So I got rid of that monster so he couldn't use his move. And because we drew off of the one summon of his Cyber Dragon off Maxi, Heraklonos is fueled for the negation. So Power Bond will be negated yet again. I really like her. He's got two combos in this deck. He's got number one, his own effect. He's got number two. Um, I mean, his his own effect with Tribal Brigade Kit, and he's got his own effect with um, uh, Max C. So basically, he's got some really deep synergy in this deck. And then also, here comes the battle. Now, it's funny. He tried to, to search with this, not letting that happen, obviously. Now he's going to battle. He's going to try to come over here with, like, 42 of those things. But that's not going to happen because guess what? This guy can't die by battle, and now you're about to get sauced. Let's go. It's cook time. So we're going to use our beast, summon, and pop. Be gone. And now it's battle time. I'm going to do a battle crime. That uh, DD Crow, just so he know. <laughs> Also had to play the DD Crow. Shout out to the AI for, for telling me to put it in there. <laughs> now I'm assuming this guy must have bricked or I must not really know what he's playing because he played uh, Fright for Patchwork to search edge imp, scissors and whatnot. And it set a face down and two back row. So I'm assuming that he bricked. Um, so I'm just going to try to go for my move. You see my hand opened up uh, pretty bricky as well. But then he pumps the imperm. He stops me from doing my Gladiator Beast combo. It's hilarious that he imperms this like he like knows what I'm up to. I hate it when they do that. <laughs> but anyway, he does that right. But it's going to still let me tag in and put it back into the deck, which I need to do because this card needs to be in the deck. But also, um, I'm not going to get a search. Uh, so I'm still going to send it back. Um, and then... In the midst of sending it back, I chained evenly match. Now, you might not know that about Gladiator Beast, but when you use the tag out effect, if you have like one Gladiator Beast, so like if you're coming off a of Gazarus or something, for example, you could Gazarus pop to, then um, attack, and then tag out, and then evenly match if you really needed to do all that. But you can do that. So evenly match, and it's evenly match for one since Glad Beast is already in the deck. And then. Um, that's negated, so it stays in the deck. Now I just set the call by the grave because that's my only thing with Maxi. Um, gonna be helpful if he does the ash, but he does the corn. He wants a corn, he wants the children of the corn. He's not gonna get it. Um, also thought this was pretty funny too. Like, these are the illusion monsters, but they got the like the millennium symbol 
Uh, I'm not the Millennium symbol. Like like the eye uh, of I think that's the eye of Ra still in Yu-Gi-Oh uh, lore or whatnot. But I'm not sure. But he's basically got the eye on his uh, forehead, just like those Ori Calco's beasts. I don't know if you guys remember those from uh, Dart season, by the way. But anyway, called by the grave and get that shit up out of here. Um, you won't be getting your place started no time soon. And then he goes ahead and sets the card has to pass. <laughs> getting cooked. Draw. And so now I'm going to try to get my cooking going. So I set this because basically I don't want to use this and I want to have it available. See, just seeing how this duel is going. I'm probably going to use it. Um, then we use fractals effect. No response to this. So felt pretty confident. I'm going to go ahead and get the add. Then we get the flip, activate the effect, banish three, and effect Valored, you scum. You scum. So this is now effect Valored, negated, hated, and now I don't have any plays because I have no monsters in the grave. So I got to pass with the max C and this card face up. And then he flips over another Edge Imp Chains. So it's like, okay, what are you doing here? Um, I guess he's just not getting anything he needs. And all right now, Konami's like, all right, kill him. <laughs> so we we commence to killing. Uh, we go ahead and send Kit to the grave. Uh, then we do Nerval. Then we're going to go ahead and add the Fractal. Then we're going to pop Karis Effect. Then we're going to banish the two to summon our Glad Beast. He's going to use his effect, and I'm going to chain Forbidden Droplets for game, uh, game win and play right here. And he's like, well, he's a good player. And I'm like, thank you. <laughs> You were wrong about the AI. You were wrong. <laughs> so we are now on duel six. Um, we have completed four victories out of five duels so far. So definitely we're crushing that 48% win rate. But let's see what happens here. Going second again, opening with that DD Crow. But this is pretty funny. We don't even get a chance to use the DD Crow because, uh, you know, we got that ash. We've got that cash. I remember this duel. Uh, Ash and dead. <laughs> Feels good, man. <laughs> Following the easiest duel in the run, I think this was the hardest duel of the run. And uh, the bone zone is going first. And I did open with Ash and double uh, evenly. And he opens up Runic, Kashtira, and he, this deck has got even more engines and it's crazy. But uh, I held on to Ash because basically I was hoping that um, holding on to Ash, I could use it on his maxi because I, you know, guaranteed this guy's going to have it. That's the three that was banished off top. Then he drops in the Deer Servant, you scumbag, sending this to draw, you silly Billy. All right. Then he activates this, Cash Tira Birth, Birth some more Trash Tira. Searches, add a spell. I know right now you're screaming, use it, use the ash, use the ash, use that. I'm like, no, I'm not ready. I'm just, I'm the Omega Ash Chad. Like, get ready. I'm going to use it when it's the most effective. Look what else he took from me. All right. So I'm going to use it when, it, when it's most optimal. So I don't know. And then we get the lightning storm. So that's, that's good too. So now we're going to punish him for his existence. So right here, he did search the deck to summon this. I did think about using Ash right here. Then again, I thought about it like, nah, whatever he brings out is gonna pay the price. So I decided to make him pay the price. We did evenly. He got rid of all these. <laughs> and then I ended my turn. <laughs> yes. So then he summons his Cash Tira, and now I Ash. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Give him the punishment that he deserves. Then he special summons. Adds the knight because he, you know, he had the Nadir Servant Engine. Jesus Christ. Drops this dude to beat me up, which is funny. Like, this guy's like, gotta kill this guy. Gotta kill this guy. Evenly matched. Shut your ass up. <laughs> Let's just take a second on that. Ah! All right, let's continue. <laughs> but oh all right now it's time for punishment now he's going to special summon his trash tira he brings out this one we're going to hit him with the uh skullduggery hadugan dark ruler no more these parts then we're going to summon 
Link one, you know, we're on that link one combo. You know, it's cook time. Nerval's effect, add to Karis, Karis effect. Oh, well, you've been negated, boy. Shut your mouth. <laughs> then we're going to use our effect. Banish two, summon the, the glad beast, and it's time for battle. Attack, lose five, down to 25. Summon the two level five or hires. Tamer editor, Domitianus. Then. The Test Panther. Come back. Come back. Tamer Editor. Her oh, not Hercules. Gizarra, sorry. Then Hercules. Sorry. We're cooking. This is the Glad Beast ritual right here. It's like, hey. Ha. Da, da. You can't stop me when once it gets to cooking like this. You can't stop it now. There's no stopping it now. That's the cook. That's the full cook right there. But now we have to face off against his cards. He plays the card that pops. Now you know what's funny? I, I negated it because he targeted it. Because I was like, I'm gonna keep the field presence. I totally forgot that this was here to send it off to ne uh to negate it from being destroyed. I goofed. But guess what? My gladiator beast with all Mirage is in L formation. And once you have L formation on your opponent, they cannot break that board, man. They just can't do it. It's impossible. It's literally impossible. It's actually in the record books, like the record books in the rules. L formation cannot be broken. See, look, the only thing that they can do is turn the L into an F. So he went from L to fail. I mean, come on, man, that's just not good. So we're gonna play with our meal a little bit. We're gonna summon. He's like, you can't destroy me, dog. Oh wait, I can't destroy you? What if I gave you a little bit of this? A little bit of SP, little knight, all night. Banish. All right, time to die. <laughs> oh wait, I couldn't battle. I forgot. For some reason I couldn't battle. I don't remember what effect went off but something prevented me from battling. I went into battle, I couldn't battle at that point. So, whatever. What's one more turn against someone who's powerless? It's time to finish them. Beat you up. Beat you up. Beat you up. Beat you up. Go in his Domitianus. 48% Ren rate AI? I think not. So right now we are cooking the AI statistics. We are going on our eighth duel. And uh, right now we've only lost one game. Our go second strategy is not only solid, but it is taking these opponents by storm. So they can't really stop us, no way. So I don't know what this is. I think this is a Blue Eyes uh, Chaos Max deck. Yeah, it's Blue Eyes Chaos Max. That's what this is. So this this was pretty awkward because um, when I started off, I, I remember playing this and seeing the Chaos Max and kind of like overthinking it because I'll tell you when I draw, because obviously you got this in, in your hand and I, I kind of was looking like with this in hand plus this in hand, I was like, I can't do the Glad Beast combo. And also my Tribrigade combos are weak. And I could throw away the Glad Beast combo to do the combo, uh, to do like the Tribrigade combo. But then again, that puts the deck at a disadvantage. So what I did was played into defense first and then eventually on the following turn i made the play that may seem more obvious but i just didn't think well you'll see all right harpy's feather duster i just didn't think that he was going to be that big of a threat harpy's feather duster got rid of evenly matched made me kind of make a second look so we just went ahead and attacked because we could have did this much different because i could have used dark ruler no more we could have popped that thing and did the full gladiator beast combo really that's what we could have did. But we didn't do that though. 
because I goofed a little bit because I was more concerned about basically um, figuring out, uh, I mean, getting a shoe rig because I was just going to banish it because it basically says, I don't know if you've read this before, but it basically says cannot be targeted or destroyed by card effects. So basically, Gazaris can't pop it and all the other cards that target can't target it. So I need shoe rig to banish it. And I just didn't want to pay the cost for shoe rig to banish it that I was going to have to pay with the one tri brigade, but I figured I was going to be able to survive with such a field. And I was, <laughs> so I took a risk and it paid off, but, uh, you know, Hey, don't try it at home. Do So we get to cooking. going to go ahead and just turn that off. Give me, give me some of that skull duggery, activate our effect. Show you your boy, send you to the shadows. You're cooked. All right. We're going to link to and go into blossom. Boss, I'm going to use Nerval. Nerval's going to search Fractal. We're going to special summon the Fractal, activate the effect to banish two, and bring out our Glad Beast. But look at this unfortunate tragedy. It's only 7,900 of those things. Mm -mm -mm. And also, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot he couldn't die. <laughs> totally forgot he couldn't die on this one it had me a little tilted on there <laughs> so we we proceed to give him some gladiation right here my boys now i did do this one wrong too because again tilted i don't know i i think i started to get preoccupied because i told you that meeting was coming up in the back of my mind and i started to get real sloppy because i'm like all right i'm trying to get the hell up out of here i gotta hurry up i got this call <laughs> i'm goofy but anyway this man plays swords of revealing light <laughs> I literally screamed because I told you about the time thing. I'm like, I'm dying on time here. How much time do I got left? Literally look down at the clock, look up his swords of revealing light. I'm like, did this man fight me in real life? What is this? So he continues swords of revealing light. I didn't negate it because I figured it was a scam. I figured it was swords of revealing light. Then Regeki. That's what I thought it was, but it wasn't. So we're just going to end our turn again. Second turn on swords, waiting until we draw um one more card to finish him we can definitely go into sp and get that out of there but no we just drew into what we needed so now it's time to finish him i'll spare you the combination you know what we're gonna do here the fractal line gonna search gonna search gonna add gonna summon gonna banish four gonna dab gonna banish now I'll kill him <laughs> go ahead and kill him go ahead and kill him <laughs> So yeah, now he's out of here. He was taking he took a little too long, but we did finish him. So yeah. Let's go ahead and take a look at our last two. Now, right now, my boy, we are eight and nine. No, eight and nine. No, we are we're seven and eight. Technically, we're seven, seven wins. Uh no, we're seven wins and one loss. So now we're trying to go to eight wins and one loss. So he summons the punk, activates the max C, gets him to end his turn. That's wonderful. Draw for turn and give him the punishment of the lifetime. Get rid of this back row with Harvey's Feather Duster. Ooh, Mirror Force. <laughs> Shabby. We're going to use Fractal. We're going to, you know, get that little cook going. And then add the one. And then we're going to summon, banish two. What we're going to do with this. Well, he, he, no, he, hey. I hope you hit the like button when you saw my video. Damn. Now, here we go, my boys. The final duel. Now, this duel took me no lie. I told you about the time crunch. This duel took me 30 fucking minutes. I was so fucking heated. I was so heated. Um, but I, you'll see why in a minute. So, basically, this guy is playing, uh, and I'm going second. This guy is playing Dark World um, Danger. And... He is not the average Dark World Danger player. He's a good Dark World Danger player. Well, w above average Dark World Danger player. I even said it in my notes to the AI. So, above average Dark World player going the fuck in with this combo. I mean, this combo is absolutely ridiculous. And I didn't DD Crow the right card. Um, you know, I should have DD Crowed his fusion spell. Uh, but I didn't know that these cards had so much range. I, like, when right here, at the moment when I did this, I knew that he needed that card to fuse into his boss monster, but then he had one in his hand. So I'm like, well, okay, whatever. 
So he happened to have a one in his hand, lucky him. And then he get, continues to just cook, like honestly. And he continues to cook. He's cooking, he's cooking, he's cooking. He's going to put all this dark world stuff on my side of the board. This is the last duel. I'm literally dying right now. The clock, I'm looking at the clock. And the clock is literally like your meeting is in two minutes. And I'm like, what the fuck, man? Like, <laughs> I'm begging for time extra on this meeting. Can I get 10 more minutes <laughs> so I can finish this fucking duel? Um, but this guy just was pretty much being annoying. And I was so I kind of was out of it at a certain point. I just was not paying attention. I just did not care. And um, and then this was pretty interesting right here. I did. I thought this was pretty interesting when he summoned this to the field. So I'm thinking, obviously, the combo's over. But his combo wasn't fucking over. This is a fucking bait. Because basically, if you got, like, a Nibiru or something, and he summons this, his combo's still not over. So he summons this thing. And then, eventually, he, like, gets rid of it. And if I had a Nibiru, I could have played Nibiru. I just, like, this guy is kind of goofy now that I look at it as a replay. But, um... Yeah, this whole deck, man, it's just, you know, again, don't know too much about it. Didn't really know what was going on. I was frustrated on the time, and I just didn't make good decisions when I actually got my turn. Um, but, yeah, this this was, like, more than irritating me. Like, look what he's doing. Like, come on. So he, so he did all that. He did all that, and then he ends his turn. And then I draw. Okay. Now, to be fair, with this hand... What I originally was thinking about doing was because I knew he didn't have like Max C or Ash or anything, and he doesn't have anything like that because he can't afford to with the way he builds the deck. It's just all gas. So I was just going to be like, activate the, the Tinky, add the card, um, and then activate like uh, uh, Dark Ruler no more, like seeing what he would do and all this other stuff. That's what was my initial thought to like play it out. But then again, I'm like, well, fuck it. I, I, I don't got no time. I'm going to rush this. And I really and I really rushed it and didn't read. So a lot of this, I kind of feel like I lost because I was in a rush and didn't read. And, you know, that just kind of is what it is. You know, that's Yu-Gi-Oh. So here we go. She pops this fusion spell. This, again, 30 fucking minutes had me fucking heated and pressured. Now, when I popped this combo, I didn't read this card fully like it's a, a whole essay but basically it's got a third effect and basically the third effect is if it's get banished it's going to give you problems so i had him with the droplet and i was going to get ready to do my combo but i didn't know that it could do that off of the banish and when it did that off the banish it took that card so after it did that it's kind of like all right well fuck it then like you know what i'm saying so i just kind of continued and i was looking at the time and i was, <laughs> I was literally sending a message and then after i attacked and I did this, right? And then he adds that back to the hand. And I think I misplayed this somehow. I think I remember making a mistake on doing this. Or, or do, oh yeah, yeah, I made a mistake on doing this because basically I was setting up the board like I always do. And I clicked on fucking SP Little Knight, man. I clicked on SP Little Knight. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. I clicked on SP and I was so mad that I clicked on SP, but I also knew that I didn't have time for this shit. And then like, you know, I was hoping that he would just like draw and quickly go into battle phase or something. Like, I don't know. I don't know why I thought he would just draw and go into battle phase, but then I just got it. He got to doing all this shit again. I was like, I gotta go, man. I gotta take my call, man. I gotta go. I gotta go. Let me get the fuck off. Let me go. I got to take my call. I think I left at some point around here. I had to have, I had to have left. Yeah. I had to get out of here at that point. I just like, bro, I just got to go. But also I was getting cooked because I had made bad choices. So I lost this one, which was the last one. And I lost the first one. So that gives me an 80% win rate. So let's go to the AI's uh, results and the results of our challenge. And let's see uh, what the AI has to say about our improved and bested actual win rate versus his estimation all right boys here we are at the end of our challenge we have completed 10 duels and in the name of the ai we have defied it we have crushed it we have defeated it <laughs> the ai have come through 
um, and took a look at our deck and took a look across the meta and deemed us to have a 48% win rate. We came back with an actual win rate of 80%. Although all of our matches weren't top tier meta, we still performed well. And after seeing our performance and based on what information we provided to the AI, basically it came back and congratulated me on 80% win rate and provided me with a new win rate that I will share with you in just one second. So let's take a look at these results here because I didn't type them in um, in the actual duel. But basically um, for the Ancient Warriors, you know, we lost because we had a lack of negation and we needed some more board wipes uh, or at least another line of play outside of you know that uh normal and the special we needed one more line because he had a uh, card for each interaction uh for the witchcrafters deck uh we utilized the gladiator beast strategy effectively and was able to win that second duel uh for the evil twin splite deck uh, the opponent couldn't get past our Opelousa with the back row set uh and we even drew into that ash so that was even pretty bet even that was also pretty good uh, game four was Cyber Dragon. Um, we set up the Gladiator Beast combo successfully. They took the L. Um, it was the illusion. Uh, we hand trapped them and then we used the Gladiator Beast combo um, with Forbidden Droplets and uh, they scooped to that. Uh, Blue Eyes White Dragon, um, they scooped to the Ash Blossom. Um, Cash Terror Runic. We executed the Gladiator Beast combo. So you can see that there is like a method to this madness. I chose to go first. I mean, I chose to go second. Um, choosing to go second got me to win as long as I can execute the Gladiator Beast combo. And typically, if I can get that combo off, I can get the dub. You know, so there's my strategy. And even the AI couldn't even pick up on that, even when I told it directly. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> you know, hey, we're all learning. Even the AI is learning too. Uh, game eight was Chaos Max. Um, and then we uh, were able to uh, beat this with the Gladiator Beast combo. Um, the Punk combo, I mean, the Punk deck. What was this? Uh, hit him with the Gladiator Beast combo after disrupting them with Maxi and Harvey's Feather Duster. And then the last was Danger Dark World. Um, and I was unfamiliar with Danger Dark World, uh, which led to me making misplays. And then I got tilted because I was under time pressure. So after all that, um, it provides the performance analysis, which is the 80% win rate. It says consistent use of the Gladiator Beast combo, strong turn one setups with the Opelousa back row. And this is effective disruption with Ash Blossom and Maxi. Uh, strategic use of board breakers and cards like Forbidden Droplet and Harpy's Feather Duster. So those are the effective strategies that I was using. The strength is the adaptability, um, early uh, control, and then effective disruption. So they're saying like this is what's keeping me in the game. This is what's got me winning based on my feedback. And this is areas of com improvement, consistency, and opening hands, which is why we took the L here um which is suggest adding more draw cards or stuff to search which fine um and familiarity with matchups which was the loss here and i you know obviously i like i mentioned i didn't really know that matchup too well um so solutions to get good start learning some more stuff uh about different archetypes um then it even threw in time management because i mentioned that i was in a time crunch uh, because a meeting popped up because that duel was 30 freaking minutes. So, you know, that's not a hundred percent my fault. I was anticipating a five to 10 minute duel, not a freaking 30 minute duel, but regardless, um, uh, it says time management, <laughs> it says time pressure led to tilting and misplays in game 10. <laughs> okay, sure. So basically recommended adjustments. What does it say? It says add a star goblin or pot of prosperity. We're already playing one pot of prosperity and I'm probably not going to play upstart. So I would look for another card to add, but I don't know what exactly I would put. Let me know if you have a suggestion in the comments, um, increase board wipes. So it said Nibiru or Regeki and definitely added Nibiru over the DD crow. Um, definitely was a better choice. I thought I would search it more with shoe rig, but I never did. 
uh, tech cards for specific matchups. So it's basically saying add some more Harpies, Feather Duster, Twin Twisters, Effect Veilers, Ghost Bell, um, and um, more copies of Ash Bloxum. <laughs> so you can never go wrong with more Ash is saying. So learn and practice against different archetypes. So it's basically telling me to get good and don't forget about the Dark World. And basically, um, it just provides this summary of, you know, everything and it's just like uh your current performance demonstrates a strong understanding and execution of your deck strategies with an impressive win rate implementing the strong it, uh, implementing the suggested adjustments could further enhance your deck's consistency and ability to handle wider ranges of matchups Focus on improving familiarity with deck archetypes and maintaining your composure under time pressure <laughs> to minimize misplays. Great advice, AI. Keep practicing and refining your strategies and continue to achieve success in future duels. Good luck. But then I, I kind of came back and was like, you're not getting away that easy. You said I was going to have a 48% win rate with my deck, and I closed it out with an 80% win rate. I want the remarks, any remarks. And then basically it did an analysis and remarks on the win rate. It says your actual win rate of 80% significantly exceeded the initial estimate of 48%. Here are some factors. And then it goes uh, all over these different things that we talked about earlier but it does gas me up a little bit strategic deck building your deck is well constructed you just stop right there let's just keep going to the next one effective use of hand traps cards like ash Blossom, and joy springs and maxi were pivotal in disrupting opponents strong opening plays mm, just gas me right up adaptability and technical play mm, mm, mm. Opponents misplays and concessions. What? What you what you trying to say, AI? What you trying to say? So the opponents misplays and concessions. Several opponents conceded early, uh, either due to strong opening plays on your part or effective disruption that left them unable to recover. Well, hey, we got to take those too. You know, we can't be picky. Sometimes, hey, sometimes we got to make them scoop the maxi and uh, and uh, Ash Blossom. <laughs> Observations and adjustments. Yeah, telling me to learn Dark dark World, uh, learn my opponent's deck. Uh, <laughs> saying the skill levels can be high. You better look out. Uh, let's see. All right, here we go. Actually, this is actually a good line. It says opponents, decks, and skill level. The quality of opponents and their decks also vary. Facing a mix of decks like Witchcrafters, Blue Eyes, and Danger Dark World, your deck, uh, your deck's adaptability was tested and proven strong. I love that. I love that. So you know, again, this is what we needed right here. We needed this. We wanted this science. We wanted this technology to explain to us after we duel, you know, what's going on, what does it see, and and it gave us some great observations. Now I know that I could possibly play Nibiru, uh, but given the confidence that it has in Nibiru and how I saw that those two games that I lost could have been won if I had Nibiru, I'm definitely going to put it in. But um, you know, at this point. Um, you know, I need to go ahead and test it against the quote unquote expectations of the meta. So I say, given this test run, what is the estimated uh, win rate against the top five decks that we previously discussed? So basically it's saying that I have a 60% win rate against Fire King Snake Eye. It's saying I got a 55% win rate against Rescue Ace. Um, I have a 65% win rate against Labyrinth. I got a 60% win rate against Six Samurai, and I have a 50% win rate against Manadium. So in a uh, scenario that I had to play 10 duels in a row, but maybe had to duel each one of them twice, it's saying that basically I'm going to come out at 58% 
in terms of a win rate. So it's saying basically my deck, the way it is, based on the way I performed, it will be a 58% win rate when I go against the world meta. So let me know if you guys want to see me face against the world meta. We're going to put in that Nibiru and, and challenge them. But, you know, only if you guys let me know that you guys want to see that uh, down in the comment section below. Don't forget to check out Revival of Duelists. It's the ultimate guide to Yu-Gi-Oh! It will teach you how to play this game. And then also when you use in this book and you get questions and you want to know rulings you want to build your deck you want to take your gameplay to the next level we've got duelistgpt.com you can use this uh amazing ai tool and it can help you as it helped me in these 10 duels but my boys that's all i got for you today and as always keep it dank